Hi everyone, welcome to the Alienist Crafts channel. My name is Lorraine and I'm coming to you from Kent in the UK. For those of you that are joining me for the first time, welcome. I do hope that you will enjoy this video and you'll come back for more. Uh, subscribe even, that would be lovely. Um, just to let you know, I generally upload on around about a monthly basis because um, I have lots of things that I'm doing. I like to do my crafting and then I like to be able to show you what I've been working on. And also, it's very difficult to keep up with everybody's um, videos. I know there are lots of podcasts out there, um, crafting podcasts that you may like to watch as well as mine. And I mean, I like to watch lots of podcasts as well. So. Um, to kind of give myself some time to watch podcasts, to do some crafting myself and to generally just get on with life, um, I try to upload on around about a monthly basis. Um, if you want to be able to check out the patterns or information for the things I have been working on that I show you in this video, do look in the description box which will be below the video. I will give you pattern links down there, I will let you know where you can find me on Ravelry and Instagram and um, I will give you names of places that I have purchased yarn from. If there is anything that I haven't put in the description box that you would like to ask me in relation to any of the things I've been working on, do feel free to put your leave a comment in the comment section below asking me and I'll do my best to answer those questions. Um, I also like to put timestamps in the description box as well so that you can skip to the section that you're interested in if you're in a rush or if you're generally just not interested in um, particular parts of the video and you want to jump to one specific element there will be timestamps for my finished objects, my whips and my incoming sections so check that out below as well. Um, I think that's it for kind of admin -y type things. Um, this time round, I have to share with you some knitting, some crocheting, and I've actually done a little bit of sewing as well. So stay tuned for that. I also have to give you the um, winner of the giveaway and share with you information about a new giveaway. So all that is coming up, but I think first we will go on to finished objects. So, my first finished object is this jumper that I am wearing. So, I think I showed you this in the last um, video and I was kind of, I think I was halfway through. It's now finished, I'm very pleased with it. Um, I will show you the pattern. So, the pattern is called Ed Edgar Town Light and it's by Alicia Plummer. That's what the pattern looks like. And bear in mind that um, I have used this pattern before and so this is a printout from the last time I used it. Um, I had noticed in one of the projects that I have worked on that the information or the pattern itself had been updated and I will explain that in a moment um, when I get to that point. But if I show you a pattern do make sure that when you go to look at the pattern on Ravelry that you're getting the most up-to-date version because people do update their patterns if they find mistakes or if they add um, more information for a different weight of yarn or add sizes that sort of thing so do make sure you're working with the most up-to-date version of the pattern because um, I nearly made that mistake myself Anyway, so I'm using the Edgar Town Light Pattern by Alicia Plummer. Last time round I worked it in a size 38, in, no 40 inch bust. This time round I decided to go smaller and use a 36 inch um, measurements for the bust. Um, the pattern calls for 4.5 millimetre needles and I have, I have used 5 millimetre needles because generally my gauge is slightly tighter and so I like to go up a size, I think that's the correct way. I like to go up a, a needle size whenever I work a pattern usually um, in terms of a garment because I know that my gauge is quite tight. So, um, and then I don't really have to swatch because I know that I'm going to be tighter gauge. If I'm really... I'm feeling really nervous about the pattern then I'll do a gauge swatch but generally because I've knit this pattern before I know what it works up like so I knew to go up a size anyway the pattern is quite easy to follow um, I've like I said I've done it before I just wanted to do a slightly different size because the one that I've got in the the 40 inch bust was slightly um, now it's it, it stretched slightly more because it's been washed and I feel like 
I could actually get away with a 36 um, bust and even if it does stretch after washing it will still be a comfortable fit for me and that's what I've got on now so I used up all the yarn which was let me show you the label I bought this Biff Sugar yarns yarn and it is the colorway cove that's the information there um i really love it it is so soft um as you can see it's a 75 25 superwash merino and nylon it's a dk weight which means it worked up really quickly as well um i think i started this after starting the little boxy jumper and um i decided the little boxy was kind of getting me not frustrated but because the little boxy was a fingering weight yarn and this was a DK weight yarn and this was working up quicker I started to kind of feel like right I need to finish the Edgartown light jumper before I go back to the boxy um, and it worked up really quickly and I was able to do that so let me stop talking and I will show you what it looks like I have actually recorded a video it is a bit shorter than I would have liked I like my jumpers to be just below my bottom but I ran out of yarn so this is what it looks like I know you can't see my head here we go um, the neck is a v-neck I really like that um, obviously otherwise I wouldn't be doing the pattern again what I found with the neck the only issue that I did find um, with this jumper was the, the binding off for the neck um, I did a stretchy bind off and the neck was really too stretchy for my liking it when I put it on it was like it would just kind of open up a bit too much and obviously I've got a top underneath it but I could actually wear this without the top because I've used um, I changed the cast on I ripped out the cup the bind off and did it again just using an ordinary bind off one over one and um, even though that is not a stretchy bind off it works perfectly for this v-neck shape and it holds it in place firmer if you get what I mean um, doing the stretchy bind off meant it was really loose around the neck and it was kind of gaping and I didn't want that so I changed the bind off after I'd finished it um, so yeah the only other modification I made on the sleeves it has this ridging um, and these are on the pattern they are pearl ridges but I wanted to do um, I made them into garter ridges because I prefer the way that sits on my other jumper the because they're pearl ridges it kind of does this buckling I don't know how to describe it it kind of sticks up a bit more um, doesn't lay flat and I felt that the garter ridge would lay flatter so I changed that to a garter ridge rather than a pearl ridge and other modifications I ran out of yarn I am literally left with this this is all I was left with after finishing the bind off for the neck. So I was like, phew, I managed to finish the jumper and only have a little bit left. So I don't have to worry about um, what to do with the leftovers. And um, the only, the disappointing thing about that is that I couldn't lengthen the hemline because the sleeves are just the right length for me. I haven't blocked the jumper. So the sleeves do look a little bit puffy and a little bit short, but if I'd blocked them, they would sit flatter and they're just, just the right length for me. Um, but the hemline, as I said, I would have liked it to be a bit longer, but I ran out of yarn, so I couldn't do that. So that was a disappointment. Um, modifications I made in terms of the hemline because I ran out of yarn as you can probably see I wasn't able to do the complete pattern at the bottom so I just did one round of the the pattern the, the um, pearl ridge pattern and had to then go into the ribbon section to get a decent length of rib and also I wasn't keen on the split hem from the first version that I did which was as per the pattern so I just did a normal hemline I took away I'm sorry for all this jigging around I took away the um, split hem so that is the jumper I'm really happy with the way it's worked up I haven't have I worn it I've worn it once so far and it's very comfortable very soft um, I can wear this I've got on actually a kind of a tank top tank top vest vest top underneath the jumper and I'm still really warm in the arms, even though I have no sleeves underneath this, I'm really warm. 
and it is lovely and soft and cozy so I'm really pleased with my Edgar Town light jumper so that is that um, I would definitely recommend it I will leave the link to the pattern below the video my next finished object is the Country Garden Cow by Ellie Jones from Craft House Magic Podcast. This is the pattern. Um, this is part of a collection of three items. So she's got the Country, Guard Colle Country Garden Collection, which includes the cow, the mittens and the beret. Um, I've finished the cow. I'm working on the beret. And um, this was kindly donated by Ellie to me and also one copy of the complete collection to my viewers who I will and the winner I will announce at the end of this video. So stay tuned for that. But yeah, I have finished up the Country Garden cowl. This is what my one looks like. I used um, the B&M yarns, which is a DK weight yarn from a B&M store. Um, I think it's acrylic. Um, it's very soft acrylic. I used this yarn for my campsite cardi by Alicia Plummer and um, yeah I had some leftovers so I decided to use it to finish up on the Country Garden collection. So I'm doing, I've done the cow, I'm really pleased with the way it turns out. I have made some mistakes in there but as Ellie said um, when I posted in her um, Country Garden give make along, make along yeah make along on Ravelry I can't I posted in there that I've made a couple of mistakes with the pattern and um, <laughs> she she very kindly said well no one's gonna notice are they so um, hopefully it's not too noticeable um, I guess I can see some bits where I've gone wrong but it is a fairly easy pattern to follow she has very detailed instructions um, so you shouldn't be able to go wrong plus there's a photograph on the front so you can see I think has she got pictures on the inside no it's got it's written instructions and it's also charted so if you if you prefer one or the other then it's perfect because you got the two in there um, but also there's a photograph on the front of that and um, other people have worked on the cow on Ravelry and I have been checking out what theirs look like in their project pages just to make sure I was on the right track in terms of the pattern so that was really helpful being able to see what it's meant to look like um, I always find that useful when I'm working on a pattern so yeah that is my country garden cow I really like the trellis I'm loving the um, butterfly section and the rib, I think I did a long tail cast on for the beginning and then at the bottom, was it? No, hang on. That's the long, this is the way up it goes. That's where I started from and that's where I finished. So this is the bottom. So I did a long tail cast on here, did the trellis, then the butterfly section and then I did the bind off and I did, I think it's Sheena's stretchy bind off. Um, where you do yarn overs. In between the stitches um, but yeah I've actually put my tag on the top and I've put it upside down because I see I think I want to wear it this way because there's more of the butterfly section than there is the trellis and I kind of felt that if I put it on that way up then you wouldn't be able to see the trellis section so I'm putting it on this way if I keep it that is so if I put it on this way you can see you should be able to see some of the butterfly and some of the trellis section hopefully I mean I'm not sure if this is going to be for me or if it's going to be gifted but I'm kind of think this is the way I would kind of have it so it keeps my neck warm you can see this section you can see the trellis section that'll be when it gets colder it'll just get higher and higher and higher <laughs> but yeah that is the cow um, I really like it it's very nice and warm and I am now working on the hat. So I'll show you that in the whips section. But yeah, that is my country garden cow. Very easy pattern to follow, very straightforward. And I would say if, I, it's probably kind of, it's easy. I'm not sure what level to place this at. Maybe intermediate, maybe intermediate level um, or advanced beginner something like that but yeah it's a very good very nice pattern it looks really pretty and I'm actually quite interested in working the socks having done the, the cow because she does have the country garden socks as well so that is the cow my next finished object is the little boxy now the little boxy is being housed 
in my Winter Wonderland bag by Lisa Saxton. This is what it looks like. And as I, I mentioned to you in the last video, I was halfway through. I was just under the arms and now I've managed to finish it. So the little boxy pattern looks like this. It's by Hohi Locatelli and it's meant to be a very oversized jumper. It's a fingering weight project and for this one the modifications I made for this was needle size. Um, I think usually like I said before when I've got um, when I'm working a pattern I go up a needle size because my gauge is usually a bit tighter than um, the pattern calls for so where um, she's done the rib in a three millimeter needle and the main body in a 3.5 millimeter needle I've gone up to a 3.25 for the rib and a 3.75 for the body um, just because I know my gauge is tighter I think that's the only modification I've made to the pattern um, I am using woolly mummy yarns I've got a lot of this left over half to finish in it I've left I think I've put that in my bag but it's a woolly mummy yarns yarn as I mentioned before and that is the info there hi ho silver and it's a merino nylon base um, and it's 75% 25% merino superwash merino nylon so yeah that is the yarn I'm using and da, 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 this is what the jumper looks like so yeah, it's very oversized. My daughter loves it. She has seen it, she's tried it on, it fits really nicely. Um, the, the only questionable thing for me, I guess, is the sleeves. I did have some issues with the shoulders because I wasn't reading the instructions properly. And I'm not very good at um, short rows shaping. So I, I had to watch a couple of videos to make sure that I was doing it correctly. Um, so I wouldn't get holes and stuff so the short row shaping was a bit of a challenge for me because I was doing the short row shaping whilst also working in pattern um, you can see this kind of a garter pattern going on here for the shoulders doing that and doing the short row shaping really my brain just didn't compute so I had to really I think I probably ripped it out about four times to make sure I was doing it correctly because at one point the pattern went a bit skew if and um, I didn't know what I was doing in terms of the short row shaping so I sat down and watched a video or a couple of videos for short row shaping and then I read through the pattern again for the shoulders and realized that and looked at the photograph which is what I said a moment ago I looked at photographs on um, on Ravelry projects to see exactly what the shoulders were meant to look like and what they look like on other projects and then I realized I was going a bit wrong and I was going a bit off pattern so I ripped out a couple a few times um, before actually finishing that off um, yeah the sleeves look like this that was the other issue um, it is oversized so when she's got it on the sleeves do hang a bit lower down but I think from what I've seen on the project pages the sleeves are supposed to be three quarter length and it does look three quarter length but I think um, my daughter's tried it on and I think she's kind of not a hundred percent sure about the length of the sleeve and I think she would like a longer sleeve and I do have quite a lot of yarn left over I think I've only used two two skeins of yarn for this yeah two and a bit skeins of yarn for this jumper so I have a I have one and a bit left to use so I could actually lengthen the sleeves but I'm kind of dithering about doing that because I'll have to undo the um, the bind off and continue the sleeves because the sleeve has shaping to it it's not just a straight sleeve either so um, I would potentially have to if I lengthen the sleeves then I'll potentially have to continue the sleeves and continue the decreases so that it actually goes down to the size of her wrist if I'm doing it right to the end of her arms so I'd have to really think about that I don't really want to lengthen the sleeves but if she's not happy with it and she wants them slightly longer then I, I guess I prefer to do that rather than just have her not wear it altogether so I'm going to see how she gets on um, but that's it if I can get a picture of her wearing it then I'll try and insert that but the other thing I think that's it. 
the other thing was with the neck shaping it wasn't I don't know if it's me or if it's just the pattern but the it's got neck shaping which is fine for the front and but when I've kind of hung it up you can't really see which is the front and which is the back sometimes so I've stuck a label in there so she knows where the back is um, but yeah that's it the pooling is really interesting isn't it I mean look you wouldn't that's two skeins of yarn. I kind of expected it to be different. I looked at um, Cassie, who is Woolly Mama Yarns. She did a little boxy for her daughter, and that's where I got the idea from to do um, this one for my daughter out of the same yarn. And the way her pattern, um, her sweater worked up, the um, patterning was slightly different. It was kind of probably kind of more like this section rather than like this bit. Um, so yeah, the yarn is unpredictable. And if you don't like this kind of unpredictable pooling look, then I would say probably stick to a plain yarn for this kind of jumper or a, um, what's the word, gradient? Is gradient the right word? Speckled, something like that, rather than something that's like a self-striping yarn that's going to pull in different ways. Um, but I like it. I wasn't too sure initially, but I actually do like it now. And I'm hoping that my daughter will continue to like it because she has kind of shown me that she can be a little bit temperamental in her taste. But that is it. That is a her boxy jumper. And at the moment, she's pleased with it. So... Yeah, I will try and get a photograph of her wearing it so you can see what it looks like on. But I'm quite pleased that that's finished. The um, It was a little bit frustrating to work with because of the fact that it was fingering weight and it's really big. Um, I used a 40 inch um, double pointed needles, not double pointed, circular needles. Um, and it was quite heavy to work with and I think working with fingering weight yarn and just doing plain stocking stitch can be really tedious um, and it but it is good TV knitting but it is really long-winded and that's why I think halfway through knitting the boxy I started this one because I just got really bored of that one and it wasn't working up quickly enough and the fact that I had this one on the go kind of helped because it um, kind of just gave me some other distraction and then I was able to go back to this one, to the boxy, and finish that off. So I'm pleased with that. Not sure I would knit that sweater again, purely because I did get bored halfway through. Um, and it's got nothing to do with th the pattern being horrible or anything like that. It's just that it just wasn't, um, there wasn't a lot in there to kind of keep my interest, keep me focused. So I did kind of stop, like I said, halfway through and have a break. But yeah. That is that. It's done. I'm pleased that it's done. And maybe if I did another boxy, it will be on a DK weight yarn for myself, something like that, um, because I know that works up quite quickly. But yeah, that's the boxy. So the next finished object I have is the sock head hat by Kelly McClure. So this is the pattern that I had printed. I have worked on the sock head hat quite a few times before, um, maybe last year. Or the year before and this is the pattern I was working to and it was only in a medium I think it is um, let me see adult medium it was one size and when I decided to start working on it again for this hat I realized that the pattern had different sizes it had baby size small size it had quite a variation of sizes and I thought to myself hang on a second this is slightly different I'm sure that the sock head was one size when I first did it um, so instead of trying to dig out my paper copy of the pattern, I had a look on Ravelry for the pattern and I realised that the pattern has been updated. As I mentioned earlier on in the video, um, the version I have is different to the one that is on Ravelry now. Um, and this one is... The paper version that I printed was from 2014 and the one that she's got on Ravelry now is actually um, 2019 version so it's definitely been updated so do be careful when you're um, using patterns on Ravelry that you're using the most up-to-date version just saying because if I had gone ahead because what I was doing before with the sock head I liked using it so I was kind of modifying the pattern um, 
when I did it earlier on, like last year, whatever, I was modifying the pattern to make it um, baby size, child size, and that kind of thing. And what she's done now is she's modified the pattern so that it includes different sizes and not just the adult medium. So I don't have to do all the thinking. I can just refer to the new version of the pattern and just follow the stitch count and everything else for that. So do check that you have the most up-to-date version of the pattern. So yeah, that's what I did. So with this one, um, this is the hat that I have made. I've made it using two different yarns. So I've used, what's that one? The bottom one is the Knitting Swede yarn, which is a Superwash BFL, which is a blue faced Leicester, 100% by the Knitting Swede. That's the pink yarn there. And that's the info. Hopefully you can see that there. That's the info and that's who it's by. That's this one. And then the multicolored, the stripy yarn is this one, Artisano, and it's 100% alpaca. I couldn't think of what else to do with this yarn, so I thought I would um, just make a hat, out, a hat out of the yarn, and the sock head hat seemed like a good one to do. Um, the yarn is really soft. I don't know if you notice here, I've got a little bit of a peak. I think I drew my stitches together too tightly. Can you see that? at the end and I've got a little bit of a peak going on up there. I think if it block, if I blocked it, it would kind of block that out. But essentially that is what the crown looks like. And this is the hat. And my modification to this was to use different size needles. So um, I used 2.75 millimeter needles for the rib and then 3.25 millimeter needles for the main body of the hat just because um, the pattern I think calls for a three millimeter needle. Well, the original pattern calls for a 2.5 millimeter needle. And let's see, it's interesting that the changes that she's made. Um, I think she's on the updated version. She's, yeah, see, on my original version, she's using 2.5 millimeter needles and on the updated version, she's using three millimeter needles. And for me, I have changed that completely because I wanted to use 2.75 for the rib and then 3.25 for the main body of the hat. So mine is slightly looser. I think, like I said, my gauge is usually tighter and that's why I go up a needle size or a fraction of a needle size, whatever. Um, and it's comfortable. What I have done, the other thing I've done is I have done a double um, brim, which I'm not overly pleased about, to be honest. Um, I thought it would be a nice little touch when I started working it. I tend to just knit the rib as long as I like and then I pick up the stitches um, from the cast on edge and knit into those alongside the other stitches. The better way to do this is to do a provisional cast on and it looks a lot neater and the inside is a lot flatter. But this is the way I've done it for, for speed and I've done the double brim and to me it doesn't really add much to the hat. And um, I think in hindsight, I probably should have just done a normal rib, um, perhaps even lengthen the rib section, make it a bit longer and just done a flip instead of doubling it this way, make it so that it can be turned over. That probably would have been a better idea, but that's what I've done um, for the pattern she has made. Oh, excuse me, my legs are starting to ache here. She does um, more um, length, she has more length for the body because she does a slouchy hat. I didn't do the length that she suggested in the pattern because I didn't want it to be slouchy. It's a baby hat, it's meant to be a baby hat. It's quite feels quite big for a baby hat though, but it's meant to be a baby hat and I felt like it's, um, yeah, putting more length on it would just be way too big for a baby's head. It's big enough as it is, so that is yeah that's how I've done it and I'm pleased with the length of it not so pleased with the cuff but it's going to be it is what it is next time I will just do an ordinary cuff and make it ordinary brim and just make it a turnover brim maybe a longer brim but yeah that's that so that is my last knitted finished object 
um, that I have to show you. As I said at the beginning of the video, I have been doing some sewing, which you'll be surprised to hear. I don't know what got me in the mood for sewing. I think, I don't know whose video I was watching or what I saw, but for some reason I decided, right, I want to get my sewing machine out and I want to do a bit of sewing. Um, I feel like doing some sewing. And so I pulled out some fabrics that I had and I got my sewing machine out and I had a go at sewing some project bags. Um, I watched a, vid a video by Whitney Sews um, and it was a tutorial for drawstring bags and it was on YouTube. I will um, leave the, try and remember to leave the link in the description box below. Whitney Sews and it was a drawstring project bag tutorial I watched. Um, I tried to have a go using that as a kind of a guide and then I kind of got it into my head that hey I can do this without using the pattern. All I need is to make sure that I've got measurements correctly, make the bag kind of squarish and be a bit more careful, um, more pay a bit more attention to detail. So anyway, let me stop yabbering on and show you my first bag. So this is my first project bag that I did. Um, not my first project bag ever, but the first project bag that I have worked on this time around. So I've done stars. I got the, the material from my local market and I have decided to do a two-tone bag. It's a box bottom like that and um, it's just lined with the same green on the inside and I've used two different colour drawstrings because I thought that would be cute. One red, one green and um, yeah and it's kind of got a kind of casing edge for the cord and I don't know what else to tell you but I, um, in the words of Ali from Little Drops of Wonderful, this is a dodgy bag. I don't know if you can see, but the casing is wonky. <laughs> you can see it there. The casing up there is wonky. And, um, yeah, my edges do not properly meet here. You can see there. Oops. It doesn't properly line up you know I mean it's not intended to be to be perfect it was just me having a go my bottom lines don't meet up but it's it's just I just wanted to give it a try and see if I could do it again and um, yeah that was my first attempt and I thought yay I've got a project bag and I could put this in a giveaway and then I thought you know what I've got some more fabric let me use that up as well let's have a go with that so I got this one out and I was a little bit more careful with this one um, in terms of measurements I measured things properly and it turned out better it's not perfect neither of these bags are perfect and they're not saleable um, but they are giveawayable <laughs> so I've got trees Christmas trees on the outside again it's box bottom and I made it easier because I instead of using stitching the bottom I just used the fold of the fabric for the bottom so I didn't have to worry about lining up seams on the bottom and the only seam I have then is on the sides um, there and that side uh, it was tricky I've done the green lining again and the cased um, casing for the cord it worked out a lot better than the first attempt. My stitching is a lot neater. I don't know if you can see there. On this one, I forgot to do the stitching around here and I did part of this bit and part of it's coming undone. Um, it's not neat. This one's not as neat. And as an afterthought, when I did this one, I thought, oh, maybe I should stitch the edges down properly so they look neater when I finish it off. And yeah, so each time I do the bag, I'm learning something that I could improve on so I've done that and now that I've finished this one I was thinking it would be really handy if it actually had a little pocket on the inside so maybe next time I do it if I remember um, I will try and attempt to stick a pocket uh, attach a pocket to the lining I'm also thinking much as I would like to um, I don't know I'd like to put these in giveaways but I don't know how to fix my little label on the front so you know it's mine without messing it up. I've got these lovely wooden labels there that I could sew on but um, 
I'm not quite sure how to attach them now that I've already done the the bag so if you've got any tips any pointers I know I can hand sew them on but is it gonna look it's not gonna look so tidy because of the because it will be attached to it'll be sewn in through the lining won't it yeah I don't know let me know if you've got any suggestions for how to put my tags on without it going through to the lining because I don't know I haven't got a clue I was just playing around to see if I could make the project bag any better than the last time that I made project bags and I feel like I have improved and these are the two bags I've come out with this one the Christmas tree one is slightly larger in size than the uh, the other one the star one but I am thinking it will be nice hopefully you guys would like to let me know would you be happy to receive one of these as part of a giveaway prize let me know in the comments section below so that's those two I've already got bags like this so I don't need them for myself I just had the fabric and I wanted to use it so um, I wanted to have a go at sewing again so yeah so those are my other two finished objects two project bags which I'm I would like to give away um, as part of giveaways if you guys would like to have them let me know what you think would you be happy to get one of these as a giveaway prize so yeah that's that so those are I think those are all of my finished objects now it's time to reorganize myself and get my working progress projects together and show you those. Okay, so the first whip I have to share with you is being housed in my Tudor Rose uh, canvas bag. And I have my badges on here that you can see. So I have my Craft House Magic, my Little Drops of Wonderful, not sure what that one is, and this one is Ducky Darlings. If you know what that one is, let me know. Um, I have that in this bag. I have my cross stitch project, which is the Bee Bunny Butterflies cross stitch project. I bought this on, I think it was So and So website. And it comes with all the threads and the instructions um, all in the pack. And it's my first actual proper cross stitch kit that I've been working on for a while and last time round um, I'll insert a picture of what I, where I was last time so you can see and since then I've managed to finish the butterfly um, the pink butterfly I've added beads on and I've put the back stitch on the butterfly I've added um, a what is it the tail and I've done some of the feet so this is what it's looking like at the moment so you can see there I've done the back stitch on the butterfly I've added the tail um, I need to fluff that up according to the pattern I use some velcro and fluff that up so it becomes a fluffy tail I've also added some of the feet as well so I'm nearly there with the actual bunny and after that then it will just be doing all the butterflies going up here and a bit round here and then I will be done with this I haven't I worked on this straight after finishing um, recording my last video and um, I was really into doing the cross stitch at that time at the moment I'm not feeling like doing any any cross stitching so I have been taking a little bit of a break from it just for a while until I really feel like yes I feel like I'm ready to concentrate focus and get going on this again and finish off the feet because um, as I said in my last video there is really no point in me picking up my cross stitch if I'm really not in the mood to do it because I will just start to make mistakes I did have a question for you though um, as I mentioned in my last video I feel like each time I pick it up I'm not sure or I can't remember which direction my top stitch is lying or was sewed so um, it's very difficult for me to see whether I've finished off my top stitch going from bottom bottom left to top right or if I've done it the other way around so um, do you have any tips for how to remember which way that your top stitch which direction your top stitch is going so that you can continue that throughout the project um, let me know in the comments section below the video so um, I can try that because just looking at it I can't actually see and my eyes aren't great as you can tell I wear glasses but I, I can't actually tell sometimes which direction the top stitch is going in so I just kind of take a bit of a guess and start 
um, pick up and start doing it in the direction I think it's going in but then when I look back at what I've done sometimes it looks like it's going in the wrong direction for this project I feel like a lot of the my stitching seems to just be changing the top stitch seems to have changed direction throughout the project and I'm just going to have to accept that for this one because it's my first ever cross stitch project but I think in future it would be really helpful to have some idea or have some tip for how to remember which direction my top stitch is going um, so if you do have tips for that let me know in the comments section below so that is where I am with my cross stitching project and I'm loving the way it's working up and I'm really pleased with the fact that I'm I just have this little bit left to do of the feet and then perhaps I can do the back stitching for the bunny and then move on to the butterflies depending on how I feel but yeah that's my cross stitch project so my next work in progress is let's see I'm just quickly looking at my Ravelry page here my next work in progress is the Country Garden Beret as I mentioned before Country Garden Beret by Ellie Jones uh, I've done the cowl so I wanted to do the hat to match so I'm using the same yarn that I used for the cowl the purple B&M yarn and I'm doing the hat and this is where I am um, I have a cross stitch not a cross stitch I have a little stitch marker here pack of cards can't remember who that came from let me see what was that that is from so beautiful by Nicola that's her card that's one of her stitch markers that I'm using on this project here and this is I've got it on a 4.5 millimeter needle I think it is yeah 4.5 millimeter circular needles and they're 16 inch so it's a little bit tight on here but hopefully you can I've just finished the trellis section of the pattern um, which I'm kind of pleased with and it's time to move on to the butterfly section and I didn't have the motivation to to start thinking about the butterfly section so I just stopped after that for the time being um, once I finished that um, yeah it's going well it's got a double a doubled over brim which I found um, it feels a lot nicer than the one I showed you on the hat that I did earlier so um, it's a for this one I used a provisional cast on to do the brim whereas on the hat that I improvised with you can see there that there's a little bit of a ridge where I just picked up the stitches from the cast on so it's totally different it it feels different on the inside to this one a lot more smooth and it's integrated so it just feels a lot nicer and looks a lot nicer so I'm pleased with the way this one's turning out and I think the rib is adequate for the for the hat hopefully and I kind of have been opening it out a bit to kind of see what it would look like as a beret because it's meant to be like this flat style and that's what it's looking like I've never done knit a beret style hat before so I was really um, interested and excited to do this one um, so yeah we shall see how I get on with this so far it's been plain sailing because it's the patterns are the same as used for the um, cowl it's pretty easy to follow because I know what the patterns are and following the instructions is just basically following it for for sizes and stuff so that's pretty easy because I've done it before so yeah I'm pleased with how that's working up so my next work in progress is the Vertices Unite shawl which is a pattern by Stephen West this is what it looks like and let me show you a picture of what it looks like properly that's what it's going to look like slightly obviously my colors are different but yeah that's what the finished shawl looks like it comes in sections I am let's see there are six sections and I have just completed section one I've worked this shawl before a little while ago and I really loved it so I thought I'd do it again and this is where I am so this is section one it's very big I'm like looking at it thinking oh wow this feels like it's a lot bigger than the first one that I did but maybe not maybe not this is what it looks like I have two yarns here I have been using 
felt fusion yarns in the colour Forest Walk. I hope you can see that. And that is the dyer, felt fusion. And it's a single ply yarn and it looks like this. It's got sparkle. It is, let's see, single ply, single superwash merino sparkle four ply yarn. And that's what it looks like. Um, you can't, you should be able to see the sparkle in that. It is really pretty. And I've used that alongside, oh, what's this one called now? This is called, let me just find it gone to earth and that's how much I've got left of that one ball I have another um, hank of this so I'm not worried that's how much I've got left of the original ball of, of yarn that I used for that that's a Biff Sugar Yarns in the colourway gone to earth and that is a uh, 75 25 superwash merino nylon base yarn and that's the combination of the two have produced this which I'm really loving and is it super wash merino nylon i think it is let's just check that let me just double check because it doesn't say it just says light i think it is i think it is i don't have the yarn label in the bag and uh, incidentally this is the bag i'm putting it in my little sheepy bag because it's getting bigger um but yeah i finished section one is done and I am needing to start section two for which I have two more yarns and I wanted to keep the theme green and browns because I wanted it to be kind of autumnal looking so I picked up um, ordered some more yarn which I had to because I didn't have any green or brown in my stash other than the ones that I've just shown you and so I ordered online this beautiful skein of yarn which is by Bird Street Yarns and it is Sugar and Maple. That's what it looks like and that's the yarn label. And that's what that one is. It's kind of a gradient brown, which I'm really loving. And also the other one is a 75%, 25% Superwash Merino fingering yarn in the color Kelpie by Biff Sugar Yarns. And that is this one, a beautiful green. So I'm kind of showing you that instead of showing you that. Sorry, that's what I'm supposed to be showing you. That's the information for this yarn, Kelpie. And so I have these two, basically. And then I've got uh, this. So the yarns are very similar. And I'm kind of hoping that they will all kind of oops, complement each other. Um, so the different sections will all be green and brown and it will still look really really nice so yeah that's the plan autumnal colors for this scarf or shawl and yeah that is what i'm going to be working on next section two so i haven't found any difficulties with this but i know that last time round um i used when it, you have to pick up stitches for this um, pattern and last time round I picked up stitches in such a way or was it the short rows I did something slightly wrong and I had to go and watch the video so I've got in my project notes the information from my last um, Vertices Unite show what I did um, wrong or what I didn't know how to do I think it was either picking up stitches, stitches, stitches. <laughs> it was the short rows, that's what it was. Stephen West has a particular way to do short rows and um, I hadn't quite figured that out. So um, I realized that he has a video on YouTube showing you how he does his short rows, which would alleviate the little holes that I got in the last Vertices Unite shawl. And so I'm gonna be watching that video again before I do short rows. Um, and I think then the short rows occur on section two, so. I have to watch that and um, use that when I'm working section two of this shawl. So yeah, that is the only thing I had that, um, to have any kind of caution about was that, the short row section on that. So yeah, so that is my last knitted work in progress. I have behind me, as you can see, my scrappy blanket whip. I've made some progress on this, I think, where was I last time round? If I can 
just check my I was on yellow so I was here last time round I was about here on the yellow section and um, since the last video I've worked this section here right the way across it is really big now um, it's quite you can see this here it's quite wide I've decided to stop it this wide because I want it to be kind of like a floor rug or something and now I'm just working lengthwise and um, in case you don't remember it's the corner to corner blanket scrappy blanket using two strands of yarn which are both double knit weight yarn um, I do think however that at some point is this I think this is a double knit this is a double knit yarn but I think at some point I managed to have used a different weight yarn I think the pink one here is probably not a double I don't know but it feels like it's a little bit stretched out and that could just be me can you see the kind of a puckering there I'm not sure it just feels like it's a little bit stretched out and that maybe I've used the wrong weight of yarn but I, I guess I can kind of pull it back I don't know but I am here I'm on the red section um, I've got this whole ball of yarn to use up for the red section I still have quite a lot of the cream yarn to use up and once I've done that that should probably last for most of the red and then I need another colour to add in for that but yeah it's working up nicely it's big I'm no longer doing colour coordinated see how I've gone from like the the blues dark colours to the blues into the pinks and reds and then yellow now once I got to like this bit here I realised that I don't have like a colour to gradiate from pink to orange or whatever so I just use what I had and that's just going in basically just using up what I've got and um, that'll be it so yeah so that is one big project I've been working on I haven't got just got a few lines in on that one um, and I'm using a five millimeter hook yeah I'm using a five millimeter hook for this project then I also have another corner to corner blanket which is this one and this is the black and grey one this one I'm trying to make a bed throw for this so it's wide but it's still not wide enough so I've decided to because I found it difficult to get the yarn for this I decided to stop the width at that that wide and then perhaps use a different yarn to finish off but it goes right the way across and I haven't quite got too wide enough for my bed yet so I still got a lot to do until I can round it off and finish that kind of rectangle shape but it's working up nicely and I did manage to get hold of um, the yarn to continue with it so I've got about three more balls of this yarn um, and then I have to rethink what I am going to add next so I'm trying to do like a rectangle once I finish that rectangular shape then I think I want to just work instead of doing corner to corner start doing some um, granny squares maybe and work upwards like that as opposed to working at angles with corner to corner style but we shall see if it works out when I get to that point I'll see how it how it's looking and try some granny squares and see if it looks good if it doesn't then I'll have to rethink and for this project I'm using a 5.5 millimeter metal hook and that's where I'm at with that one I haven't done an update picture on um, my Ravelry for this because I have to find a space big enough to kind of lay it out which I guess would be the bed but I just haven't had a chance to do that yet so I think that is all my whips those are all my whips let's see yes the other blanket I'm working on I'm thinking about ripping it out um, so I haven't done any work on that because um, I recently saw um, Ellie from Craft House Magic working Sandra Paul's what is it called 
she's got a make along going on at the moment Sandra Paul and she's doing lots of she's doing a granny square blanket and it looks really really pretty and I was thinking that maybe I could just rip out the grey project I'm working on I'll try and insert a picture and um, just start again doing proper sized granny squares and then just stitching all that together and that would make a really nice blanket I think it's called the garden walk or something like that I'll try and um, I'll find out and insert the information in the description of the video so you know but yeah those are my works in progress I've had a lot of things that I've been working on um, I did slow down for a bit I wasn't doing crochet for a while because I wanted to finish up some of my knitting projects I wanted to finish up this jump runner and I wanted to finish up the boxy um, I've had an eye infection I've not been feeling so great the weather's changed and it's really naff outside and um, my motivation to do any crocheting was just kind of like mm, I don't really feel like doing it um, but in the last week I felt like right let's make a move on the crocheting let's do some of that and so I've done a bit of work on that I'm kind of getting my crochet mojo back but I don't want to overdo it because I don't want to get sick of it but that's where I am with that um now it's time for incoming so as I showed you before these two yarns that I bought these are two incoming yarns one from Mr. Bird yarns or Bird Street yarns and the other one from Biff Sugar yarns those are the two things I bought this uh, well this time round month week whatever and I also picked up from John Lewis this damask rose bookmark kit because I thought it was pretty I thought once I finished the cross stitch bee bunny the bee bunnies cross stitch butterflies um, kit I would like to work on this bookmark because I thought it's really pretty and I thought it would make a nice little gift um, for me to give to somebody so and it's quite intricate it's intricate enough that it will take me a little bit of time to work on it but I also think it looks really pretty even if I don't give it away if I keep it for myself it'll be a nice bookmark anyway whatever I decided to pick this up from John Lewis I like the look of it and um, you can get this online this was 850 from John Lewis which is probably a little bit overpriced you can probably get it online for cheaper but I saw it in the shop looked at it decided it was nice and bought it it is what it is um, so hopefully I'll get some joy out of that and it comes with the little sash thing sash what do you call that thing uh, tassel that's the word it comes with the tassel and the threads and the little chart everything is in there that I need and yes it should be a nice little project to start at some point when I finish the bee bunnies butterfly one so that I think that's the extent of my incoming this time around so let's move on to the giveaway um, prize winner so So it's time to announce the winner of the giveaway and as you guys know the prize was the Country Garden collection which consists of the cowl and the beret and the mittens by Ellie Jones um, who has or runs the Craft House Magic podcast and has her own shop. Um, she kindly donated a, collect a copy of the whole collection to one of my viewers and I wanted to know from you what is your favorite thing to knit or crochet for gifting and I entered the information into um, a random comment picker website thingamy I don't know what it's called <laughs> sorry guys I'm not very technical like that and it selected Rena Hanlon as my winner. So congratulations Rena, you have won the Country Garden Collection by Ellie Jones. Um, I will let Ellie know that you are the winner of the collection and thank you to everybody else who entered. Um, and that's the end of that one. But all is not lost. I have another pattern which has been kindly donated to a viewer of the podcast of my channel and this is the pattern for the gypsophilia socks gypsophilia socks and this is by Susan Hardy and this is a patterned pair of ankle socks I guess and it also has within the pattern um, instructions for a plain pair of socks too so you get two in one and to win this 
um, pattern, copy of that pattern, I have decided to make it a Ravelry based um, giveaway. So I will be opening up a thread in the Ravelry um, group and I will be asking you to just let me know why you'd like to win a copy of the pattern, basically. Very easy, just you must be a member of the Ravelry group to enter and I want to know why you'd like to win a copy of the pattern. That's it, simple as that. So um, go on over to the Ravelry group, the information is in the description box below and you can enter to win a copy of that pattern. I haven't forgotten that I am intending to do a giveaway for um, when I reach to 200 subscribers so um, do stay tuned for that. I'm not quite there yet. <laughs> Hopefully I'll get there but I'm not quite there yet so I've got a bit of time to prepare for that. Um, also I would like to do um, an Instagram based giveaway um, because I don't want my Instagram followers to miss out on gifts as well so um, look out for that. I'm trying to figure out first of all how to run that one so um, I'm having a think on that one to see what I can do um, but I will be doing an Instagram one too so yeah if you didn't win this well you didn't win this time round then all is not lost I do have like I said I'm going to do the giveaway for the Gypsophilia socks which will be over on Ravelry and I'm intending to do something on Instagram as well so that should kind of cover all angles so Yes, I think that rounds it up for this time round. Um, thank you so much for sticking with me, if you have done right to the end of this video. I know it's been a long one, but I've had um, a few things thrown in here that I don't normally have, like the sewing, for example. So yeah, so hopefully you've enjoyed it. If you have, give me some thumbs up, let me know in the comments section below, and subscribe if you haven't already, because it would really make my day. And also, it will bring me that much closer to my 200 subscriber um, count and to my 200 subscriber giveaway so win-win <laughs> anyway that's it from me thanks for joining me this time around and see you in a month's time I guess coming up to Christmas isn't it yeah maybe I'll try and do something before then um, but hopefully in about a month's time I will do another video and then I will announce the winner of the Ravelry giveaway and I think I'll probably try and be a bit more organised and put an end date for entries to that one in the Ravelry thread so um, do have a look over there and um, see what the rules are and yeah let's have some fun <laughs> that's it from me see you next time bye for now